We are no longer just talking about AI innovation in the abstract. We are seeing real product making, deployment and productivity gains. From breakthroughs in silicon, to creation of small language models like Orca and Phi, to models as a service which is making it easier to bring the power of Cohere, or Llama, Mistral to more apps, to the latest and the best from OpenAI, and of course, Copilot, your everyday AI companion. Will AI affect the development of super smart computers? OpenAI is about to unveil its new super powered search tool. It's similar to Google, but even smarter. Microsoft's OpenAI team is cooking up a new search thing, kind of like Google. They want to compete with Google and another smart search startup called Perplexity. Before Thursday's report from Reuters came out, OpenAI didn't want to talk about it. But then on Friday, they dropped a bombshell. They're gonna show off some cool updates to their chat GPT and GPT-4 during a live event on Monday. Oh, and their CEO made it clear. No, it's not GPT-5 and it's definitely not a search engine. You know, we've been busting our butts and some cool new stuff that we're super excited about. It's like pure magic to us. Oh, and after Altman spilled the beans, Alphabet's stock bounced back a bit. It had dropped over 2%, but then it only went down 0.9%. OpenAI's big announcements might be coming right before Google's big conference starts on Tuesday, so OpenAI's new search thing is like a supercharged version of their chat GPT. It lets chat GPT grab info straight from the internet and even adds where it got the info from. And in case you're wondering, ChatGPT is basically OpenAI's cool chatbot that uses fancy AI to chat just like a human would. People who watch this stuff have always seen ChatGPT as an other way to find stuff online. But it hasn't been great at giving accurate info super quickly from the internet. OpenAI tried to help by teaming up with Microsoft's Bing for folks who pay for it. Google's bringing out some cool AI tricks for its search engine. And there's a startup called Perplexity, worth a whopping $1 billion, started by someone who used to work at OpenAI. They're doing pretty well by making a search thingy that's all about AI, and it even shows where it got info from, and pictures along with text. In January, the startup said they're losing their thing every month. OpenAI launched ChatGPT back in 2022. It was crazy popular, hitting 100 million users in no time. But lately, the number of people checking out ChatGPT's website has been up and down like a roller coaster. So ChatGPT's website traffic has been kind of wonky lately. It dropped for a while, but now it's finally getting back to where it was in May 2023. According to SimilarWeb, people are keeping an eye on it. But OpenAI is feeling the heat to get more folks using it. Oh, and they tried this thing called GPT plugins to bring in fresh info, but they called it quits in April. So, OpenAI put up a post on their website's help center about it. And Kathy Wood's ARK Investment Management just said they own part of OpenAI. They're banking on the idea that AI is going to totally change how tech works. And this fund started up in September 2022, and it's all about investing in different companies. Both big names like Elon Musk's SpaceX and smaller ones too. They're still getting started and not too big yet, but they're happy with how fast things are moving in the foundation model area. According to Brad Winton, one of the big wigs at ARC, things are moving even faster than they thought. He reckons that by 2030, companies using foundation models could be worth a whopping $16 trillion. And OpenAI has scored tons of cash, with Microsoft being a major investor. Microsoft has chipped in a whopping $13 billion into OpenAI, and some employees got the chance to sell their shares at a super high value of $86 billion. Arc also invested in OpenAI, but they're keeping the details hush-hush. OpenAI and Microsoft didn't have much to say about it, and Winton mentioned that OpenAI makes up around 4% of the Arc Venture Fund's investments. And get this... Arc's also got some money in a competitor called Anthropic, making up about 5% of the same fund. Remember Arc's big hit, the Arc Innovation ETF? That took off during the pandemic by betting big on companies like Tesla. So, the Arc Innovation ETF hasn't been doing so hot this year because Tesla's share price went down. Most of the money in the venture fund is tied up in private companies, about 80% of it. Went and mentioned they update how much everything's worth every day, so folks investing in ARK's stuff get a fair shake. Went and was totally blown away by the Sora model from OpenAI, this new tool that turns text into videos. He couldn't believe how fast innovation is happening. 
so they wanted to get in on it. Winton mentioned that they know there are some risks with how OpenAI runs things, but most tech companies have their own risks. He brought up nuclear power as an example, saying it faced challenges with regulations back in the 1970s. In an interview on Bloomberg television last Friday, he said, there's a chance we might do the same thing with AI, where we worry so much about the risks that we miss out on all the good stuff. Meanwhile, Microsoft is busy working on a huge AI language model called MAI1. So, basically, Microsoft jumping into this could put them up against big players like Google, Anthropic, and OpenAI. That's what insiders are saying, according to the information. Mustafa Soleiman, who used to be the big in Google's AI team and then ran the AI startup Inflection, is now leading the charge on making MAI1 at Microsoft. After Microsoft brought most of Inflection's teams and smarts for a whopping $650 million in March, Soleiman's the boss steering this new AI project. So, MAI1 is getting all its smarts from the folks who used to work in Inflection. And insiders at Microsoft, who know all about the project, say MAI1 is a brand new super big language model. They're saying it's got around 500 billion. So, MAI1 is huge. It's way bigger than Microsoft's older models like the PHI 3. To handle all its brain power, MAI1 needs a lot more computer power and training data. MAI-1 is right up there with OpenAI's rumored GPT-4. They're both huge, with over a trillion bits of info to work with. That's way more than smaller models like the ones from Meta and Mistral, which are around 70 billion bits. So what makes Microsoft's new chatbot model MAI-1 special? Well, it shows how Microsoft is tackling AI in different ways. They're making smaller models for phones that work on their own, while also building big ones that use the internet's power. It's all about finding the right balance. You know, Apple seems to be doing something similar. And for Microsoft, this shows they're not just relying on OpenAI for all their AI stuff, they're exploring their own ideas too. Even people at Microsoft aren't exactly sure what MAI1 will do. It all depends on how well it works. That's what insiders mentioned to the information. So, to teach this model, Microsoft set up a big group of servers with NVIDIA GPUs. They gather data from all over the place, like stuff from OpenAI's GPT-4 and things anyone can find on the internet. Reports say Microsoft might show a sneak peek of MAI-1 at its Build Developer Conference happening soon. And insiders spilled the beans to the information. OpenAI just dropped the first draft of something called the Model Spec. It's like a guidebook that tells us how they want their models to act in the OpenAI API and chat GPT. At the same time, it gives us a peek into how OpenAI decides what their models should do. You know how AI models act when you talk to them, right? Well, that's what we call model behavior. It's all about how they sound, how long their answers are, and stuff like that. OpenAI says, these models don't learn from direct instructions, but rather from data. So, figuring it out exactly how they should act is still kind of new, with lots of little details to think about. The model spec is like OpenAI's playbook for figuring out how their models should act. It talks about their experiences and what they're still studying. OpenAI hasn't actually used the model spec yet, but they're figuring out ways for their models to learn from it directly. It's all about getting their AI to behave just right. OpenAI talks about three main model spec ideas. Objectives, rules, and default behavior. Objectives are about helping both developers and users and making things better for everyone. Rules are, well, rules to follow. And default behavior means the usual way the model acts, which should match up with the objectives and rules. OpenAI wants to help out researchers and AI trainers who are using reinforcement learning with human feedback. They're sharing the model spec as a guide to make things easier for everyone, and it's all about sharing knowledge and making progress together. OpenAI wants to be open about how its models work and hear from everyone about what they think. And rumor has it that OpenAI might be getting into the search game, which could make Google a little nervous. You've got something to say about the model spec, now is your chance. They're taking feedback until May 22nd and they want to hear from everyone, no matter how much you know about tech stuff. So, OpenAI is really working on building trust with everyone when it comes to their models. They just rolled out a cool new tool that can spot images made by their DALI 3 tool. Can we expect more from OpenAI? Do let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. We'll meet you next time.